All right, guys, I'm going to uh, get started. The PowerPoint is basically an electronic version of the paper agenda you have in front of you, so I'm going to go through the PowerPoint from start to finish, um, starting with energy management updates. So we haven't touched base on this in a while, but as I said, we've been watching the score closely. 75 is the Energy Star rating to be considered Energy Star rated. That's where we sit today. Um, at one point, our baseline score was 86 when we took modulars offline when things were a little bit different. Um, the way we used to manage the um, energy plan. So we need to get back on track with some of the policies that we used to uh, enforce in a, in a better way. So the reason I think the best way to approach that is with um, and, you know, educating the newer staff, people that may not have been here when we worked on energy management initially. So at some of the superintendent meetings and opportunities that we have throughout the year, we're going to reintroduce how our plan works, what it looks like, and make sure that people are aware of it, along with the green team that we have in place uh, to re-educate folks. Another thing we're doing is I had an ASHRAE Level 1 Energy Audit uh, performed. There were 42 individual energy savings opportunities across the seven buildings we asked Aramark to take a look at. Now those are the seven buildings that were showing not performing the way they once were. Um, the energy savings basically break down into two categories. There's nine operational maintenance and number six energy conservation measures. Uh, if we were to implement all of the items that they identified, it would be about $185,000 per year savings on our energy bill. I'm not sure that all of the items are feasible for us to implement based on the payback. So we'll take a look at that. Um, any of the items that we believe are worthy of considering, we will add to the capital projects list which will be presented to you uh, in a couple of months. So I'll talk more about this later. I just wanted you to know that we are continuing to look at the energy plan and be mindful of it uh, as we move forward. So there's, there's, if I'm reading this correctly, we've seen some very significant cost increases. And we've seen some, of us not really expecting what we expect our folks to do. We've seen some per building performance issues. Some of those, some of those are related to uh, controls, equipment, things that are tiring that are not performing the way they once used to. And some of them are just creature habit. You say we're not, we're not being mindful to shut off lights when we leave rooms. We're not doing the things we, we used to. Used to do part of that five years it was five years ago or four years ago we started a big thing and every building was almost accountable to some level and we put up signs and we did and the other things to do that again. agreed yeah. we, we also used to have an Aramark staff member who basically lived here and went throughout the district all day every day making sure that this stuff took place that that went away obviously because of the cost and they were here for a fine period of time we do have Aramark here on an hourly basis if needed for energy management. They provide us with monthly reports to show us where we are, but they're not here every day bird dogging our energy plan. So uh, we need to you know, look at how we can better manage it with perhaps one of our maintenance staff members that's educated in, uh, in the energy plan from that process that they can take on a dual role or something we can consider to help us um, manage this in a greater way, but we're mindful of it, we're continuing to track it. We're still in a good place, so it's not like we're in trouble, but we don't want this to slide more than it has, so we're watching. The Good Elementary School update, the project is complete with the exception to the gymnasium and the stage. They're scheduled to be complete on the 20th of this month. The big activity left is the pouring of the uh, floor system. It's a synthetic floor system that's placed on the existing concrete. They are uh, clearing the floor and ready to start installing that directly next week. Um, a final accounting of the change orders and allowances will be presented at an upcoming meeting. And there is a rededication plan for Friday, September 25th at 6 p.m. at Good New Elementary School. I know Nicole has sent this out to the community. Um, so hopefully we'll see a good showing that evening. But um, we're looking forward to uh, giving people the opportunity to go through the school and check it out. The G and B are capitalized here. Yes, they should be. So a quick PowerPoint. Um, not going to get too deep into it. This is uh, nearly complete. G 
gym and stage. Uh, the stage addition is there with a the large window, which also doubles as a, uh, an additional educational space if needed. There's a sound rated partition that can close. If you were to use it as that space, you can open the blackout curtains on the back of the stage and introduce natural light into a space the kids would be in. So it really is a nice function of the space. Those are the windows that were set back because the heights were wrong. Um, actually, the entrance itself. The, uh, the man doors and the windows along the sides, that was uh, scheduled to be uh, more glass there than there is. Um, there, were, there, were, there was glass above the doors and more glass on the left side of the turns. That, that was all reduced to account for the steel elevation issue. Can you remind me again, this is the music classroom? It, it is part of the music program. Um, how often they'll use it, I can't speak to. That's so something. there's a music classroom in the building? There, there is. Yeah, there's a music classroom in the building and another space for, there's two spaces allocated for the music program. In and this the is a third? And this is a third. So it, it could be used as, as, you know, any kind of space that would be appropriate um, for that area. But we'll have to take a look at that as we study the capacities again. They're certainly invisible. How's the traffic doing? I, I have been over there, but like the special analysts is coming in and the gate that closes. Yeah. I was there on opening day, um, and I actually stood at the um, special needs area where the buses were coming in to help manage it on day one. It went really, really well. Um, the traffic flow was great. People were in and out quickly. Nicole was very pleased with the way it went. The only challenge we had was the Champions program and if they're part of the bring students into the Champions program, how that works with the other traffic. So Nicole was developing a, a plan based on what we saw to address that. So it went really well. Um, on the stage itself, the lighting is going in. We're, we're moving along um, with the interior piece. The proscenium arch is being uh, completed. There's a little bit of wood trim that's on there. The areas under the stage get doors. That's where we put the uh, seating that we use in the space itself. So we have storage beneath it. The wood floor has been placed on the stage. Um, that's completed at this point. And we're waiting for the new floor or the, the floor to go into gym proper. Uh, moving on to the Newtown and Holland, uh, Holland Middle School projects, there is um, a lot going on. I wanted to give you kind of a. That window is actually at the level of the, it's at the level of the stage. It's at the level of the stage, but uh, several feet above grade outside. Yeah, there's a, there's, is there a barricade to prevent someone from pushing something? Move things around on the stage. Yeah, there's a temper. I mean, there's, there's actually I said glass is temper. There's actually right? curtains for the curtains themselves are not against the glass. The curtains are forward of that by a couple of feet. So there's not the, the curtains are against the glass. All right. I'm just concerned that people are rolling things around on the stage when they do. Yeah. And when we don't play real about the end on the parking lot. All right. Thanks. Um, it is tempered glass, obviously. Oh, yeah. it's certainly not going to stop something large. Uh, a lot going on on the uh, middle school projects. I wanted to give you a, a quick update on some of the items that pertain to the board, some things that you're going to have to uh, address or see coming down the road. Also, some township meetings that you're aware of, so you can be aware of as well. The New Town Township Zoning Hearing uh, Board meeting was on the 3rd of September. Um, we were successful in approving 17 uh, variance requests that evening. Once we were finally heard that evening, our piece went very quickly. The, the township was extremely cooperative. Um, they've been great to work with to this point, um, the Planning Commission and the Zoning Hearing Board. So we look forward to going back to them, uh, to the Planning Commission again uh, next month. I spoke to a member of the Zoning Hearing Board who acknowledged how they can best bear and said, you always gave them too much information. I said, that's a good thing. And he said, it is he said, but we were like, no, let's whip through this in 10 minutes. And he said, and you guys refuse to do that. Yeah, to give you an idea, the first group, there were two groups in front of us. The first group was finished in 15 minutes. The second group took two hours and 45 minutes. So three hours later, we were finally heard. We started at 7, we were heard at 10. The groups in front of us had one or two variants. The second group had three or four. We had 17, which was an all-time record for variance requests. Um, our solicitor did a nice job, Mike Carr, in giving a skeletal review of all of the items that we had on the list. 
Uh, we asked if they had anything to go in, uh, into in great depth. They had very little. They were pleased and you said the information we provided. And, uh, pleased enough to reach out to me. I didn't reach out to them. Yeah, they, they did very good. So um, we were really happy with the way went. About 25 minutes later, we were finished with our piece. So um, a good meeting. The uh, facilities update for the Act 34 hearing tonight. I'm just going to give you an update on the Act 34 hearing that's coming up for both of these projects. Northampton Township Zoning Hearing Board is next, so we'll go to them at the end of this month and be heard by them for some variance requests for that project as well. Do you have 17 for them too? We don't, but we do have a, a good bit. Um, and some of them are just simple things. Based on the size of your project, the square footage, you might be required to provide multiple loading dock areas because of the size of your building. Now, of course, we only need one loading dock, so we're going for a variance to request one loading dock and one three. There's building setback issues, there's parking count issues, there's all sorts of things that we go in for and uh, we, we're careful to cover all the bases. So that's, that's a little bit for sure what they're holding us to on, on water and in parks and all of that, right? Those are, those are separate. They're, they're not part of that? No. Can, can you, just a good question, I was going to jump in with that. Can you take an opportunity maybe to give us an update because I know plan for the agenda on Thursday is the last swap we yes. I'm not sure everybody in the room is ready to, to consider that until we get closer on the other piece, and I don't want to have a, you know, you know, an uncomfortable situation between us. I definitely plan on the touch on that. Yep, I have, have a piece here. In here? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Just at the slide where I'll it'll trigger me to do so. Um, in the blue are the board That's motion items. That's subject to litigation. Are we, is there a litigation position? Not yet. Well, the, the ask the request for concessions from the water authority could be. Oh no, I wasn't even talking about that one. I'm going to touch base on both stuff briefly. Okay. Now, a real quick update on both yeah. of those in a moment. So, mm -hmm. and then if you want to further discuss, yeah. no problem. Um, the items in blue are board motion items. So, on the first of October at the board meeting, I'll be bringing to you the Act 34 resolution, which is basically um, the, the public notice of the hearing. Um, and the acknowledgement of the cost of the project that you would approve heading into the Act 34 hearing in November. It's a requirement that you approve the resolution. And I'll show you that also in just a couple minutes. The Newtown Township Planning Commission meeting is the 6th of October. We'll be going back to them asking for conditional final approval. Should we get that, we then move to the Board of Supervisors. I don't have the supervisor meetings on this schedule because I don't know when they are. It's based upon the Planning Commission's approval. The um, Northampton Township Planning Commission meeting is the 13th of October. So a week after we see Newtown, we'll be back to their planning commission and ask again for conditional file to go to their supervisors. Um, the Act 34 hearing for both projects is the 19th of November, 1 at 6, 1 at 6.45, and then we roll into the board meeting after that. So we have it in the boardroom. Historically, Matt has reported that uh, meeting. I think it's live, generally. Um, and then we would roll into the board meeting. Um, we'll go through what that looks like a little bit later. Um, not tonight, but I'll show you what the Act 34 piece is about. The FACOM update on the 10th of December, I'll bring to you the Part D project accounting based on estimates and Part E design development. Those are two parts that have to ultimately go to PlanCon for approval to keep us moving. Um, so that's coming up. The 19th of December is the 30-day waiting period for the Act 34 hearing. So after we present, we have 30 days for anyone to provide for us um, any written comments they might have relative to the hearing. I expect Nancy might send us something. Um, the FACCOM update, PlanCOM Part F construction documents, we'll present those on the 14th of January. Um, the board approval of the plan account part D, E, and F would be the 21st of January. Again, I'll give you written information, descriptions of all of this in your board packets before anything happens. We'll give you updates at facilities meetings. You'll understand all of this clearly before we move into any requests. Backcom update for part G, which is project accounting based on the bids, is 14 of April. So what we we would come to the facilities meeting on the 14th of April with the bid results, essentially. And then talk about uh, the options and, and what we would recommend based on the bids that we see. 
and then board approval of those bids would be requested on the 21st of April, 2016. After that point, we can then um, collect the necessary bonds, insurance, review those documents with the attorneys, and then execute contracts and move forward. Pending the board will sit, continues to approve this, these documents throughout this process. So um, some of the items that we talked on before, again, for information only, not for deep discussion. I know we talked about these last month. I'm just keeping them on the list because they're still alive. The request for two additional study or additional studies of two intersections at Holland um, is something that I've reached out to Mr. Pellegrino about the township manager, and we'll have some discussion about that. I'll report back to you once we have those discussions. Um, Park and Rec fee, I don't anticipate being an issue. It's just something I'm keeping on the list so that it's in front of you in the event it would become problematic. I truly don't anticipate that would be an issue. The NBCMA, the uh, Northampton Bucks County Municipal Authority, uh, sewer water allocation, we have had discussions with them. Uh, it's fair to say publicly that we are going to go to their meeting um, next Wednesday, their board meeting, and they did um, give us some reason to believe that they may reconsider um, their fee structure for public schools. So that's on their agenda. It's the only agenda item. Um, I'll be going there along with East Burn and Gray, Terraform Engineers, and perhaps uh, Robert, his schedule permits. What day is that? That's next Wednesday at uh, 7 30. Would you like any of us, sir? Um, you're welcome. I think we're going to have the core group that we need. Um, well, not for this paper, but more support. <laughs> If, you know, if you feel if you feel that you want a night out, you're welcome. I, I'm confident with the team we have and having Mike Carr from East Party Gray there that would be well represented with if Robert's there we're, we're golden. So I think we're good. But feel free, it's a public meeting. If you want to come out and show your support, it can't hurt. Um, I, I feel good about it. I, I'm optimistic, let me put it that way, that, that we might see some change. Um, can we take that page? Yes. Uh, wait, sorry. Is there these two, these two top ones and the first thing on the next page? How do you get that to Next one's good to Okay, so so is there a way, again, given that this is going to be on the agenda for next Thursday, the last swap, uh, I'd like to, just me personally, I'd like to understand that we have closure on those two things. Before. The land swap, what I will say is, and I, I don't want to say too much, um, what I would say though is the land swap issue is independent of, for sure, the, last one I get the NBCMA. Yeah. They're, That's fine. they're different, yeah. different authorities, yeah. they have no connection. Yeah. Until I spoke with the township manager, Mr. Pellegrino, um, yesterday, he wasn't aware of some of these issues yeah. relative to the traffic study. He's collecting that information, we're going to regroup. And I think that we're going to be okay with that piece as well. But um, it's important that you have your, you know, your discussions. And before we head into the board meeting next week, we'll certainly have some better direction of where we want to follow. Well, yeah, the sooner the better. So exactly. I just don't want to be in an uncomfortable situation. I, personally, I think it's important that it's on the agenda. And if, if, if it needs to be for whatever reason, you know, pulled or for some reason that you're not comfortable with it, then certainly have that opportunity. But, so, so we'll wait here. Do you want that? So yes. Sooner, sooner. Yes. That awesome. yep. that hopefully it works out. I expect that you're back by tomorrow. What cost? Yeah. Newtown Middle School, um, again, the fee for the park and racks is something that will come up as after we go through uh, planning commission through the board of supervisors. We'll have those discussions, request them to waive them to waive those fees. I don't think we're going to have an issue, but again, I'm going to carry it until it isn't an issue. Um, Requested an informal traffic study. That request for Newtown may now be coming for a formal traffic study request. We'll have to find out what that means. Yes. So you're requesting that the entire third student part that was being waived? Yes. If we were confident that we'll be able to get that done. Uh, we had an initial meeting with them. Their chair of their committee was not there at the meeting. It's likely we're going to revisit that committee again and talk to them. But the group minus absent their uh, committee chair was um, giving us a, a good indication that that was something that we would be able to have. But that ultimately comes up under the jurisdiction of the board of supervisors, right? The one right. That. That's true. Right. But if the park and rec committee recommends waiving, then they're apt to say 
well, we, we agree. It's, it's a fee or it's something like you can either, if we were a developer and we went in and said we want to do this project on their property, on, on property within their township, it would be the fee of 375 or giving them 3.2 acres. Obviously, we're not going to give them land that we have on there because we need the land that we have. So we're going to talk about waiving the fee. Um, and, and, and you have a list of the activities that we've previously done with the township. We, we do. Um, obviously, our relationship with Northampton Township and um, Newtown is, 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 is very different. Um, what I will say, though, is Newtown is very interested in establishing a relationship similar to what we have with Northampton. Mm -hmm. And there's interest in us getting together and talking about how we can start talking about waiving fees and, and use of the facilities without cost. Do you have uh, the acreage associated with the easement given the no charge? Uh, to the, across the other school I, property. For more veterans park. Yeah. I don't have that the acre. No. Can you establish that when you go to that? So yeah. yeah. Because in essence we go to the easement that they pay, uh, which would certainly be tantamount to giving them the property away. Okay. If, if there turns out to be any charge whatsoever, I want to we're going to need a solution for middle school sports at some point. And Veterans Park is probably the logical place for that. So I think that there's a willingness uh, from them to allow us to utilize those fields up to a certain time. And we've talked about this. There was uh, discussion. I was certainly not here at the time that whole uh, process took place. But, but there was thought that somewhere in the agreement, there was discussion that we would have first rights to use those fields up until 5 p.m. Uh, during the week, but I don't think there's anything formally written into the agreement. But saying that, I did talk to the township manager because it doesn't mean we're not willing to work with you. We're just looking for it in the agreement itself. It doesn't seem to be there. So we'll continue to have those discussions. We have some space over at Newtown Elementary School as well. Um, we did talk to uh, Tyler State Park folks about using a small piece of land next door. And to use it and what they want us to do to restore it after the fact is beyond reason. So we're not going to pursue the use of any type of state park for our temporary fields. Uh, a couple other things we're going to touch on is the courtyard design solution and basketball court. The traffic thing is, I still get confused with the rationale for a traffic study in, in, in that it's the same use. It's, it's not really growing so that it's the same use. It's a really growing slip. Do you know? Why just love that traffic studies? Is there a, a, a Yeah, well, sure. I mean, we, they, they get complaints. They have issues at certain intersections. And in this case, it happens to be one uh, planning commission member that doesn't like the intersection coming off the bypass and as you loop around the immediate turn into Green Lane. And he, he's, he's felt challenges with that in his lifetime of navigating that intersection, so his response is, I think that should be looked at. You know, I've almost got hit a couple times there, and it's a problem. So we, we looked at the traffic, um, the actual number of um, accidents at the intersection, and it's at minimum over five years. There really are not a lot of accidents that occurred there. The western drive, the, the drive further up, um, we actually are engaging uh, PennDOT because we have to change the entrance to that in that the road widens, but then as soon as it hits that intersection, it narrows back down. Just, just because of the way it narrows, we have to widen the other side of the mouth to match where you know, we're terminating into. So we, it triggers us to go to Penn Dot for that intersection. Um, there's really no other reason. There's discussion about, is, you know, do you have any of that? Uh, and in only, no egress from, you know, from Green Lane. There's, there's been other discussions about how that wants to function. So we have to get back in front of them and have more discussion about it before I get too alarmed on the traffic issue here. But I agree with you, Bill. It's, it's the same exact use. But we're not changing a single thing. So we really shouldn't be required to have a traffic study performed um, for that. But we are being responsible with the pen dot piece of the other drive. So we'll have further discussion with, with Newtown and see where that goes. And I'll be back in touch with you when I learn more. Um, 
the items on the bottom are things that have been discussed at some of the facilities committee meetings. I'm just bringing them back to you to show you kind of where those things are. Um, and I will touch on those in a minute. Um, Holland Middle School, we're looking at the building phasing. We had a couple of serious meetings to look at how that all works, how it works with Dan Breeland, Rich Hollihan when there's actual programs in the building and how they move around during construction, how construction would impact that, how many rooms can they give up in the first phase, what can we give up in the first phase, and if, you know, tech ed is obviously not easy to relocate, general classrooms are. So looking at all those kinds of things, there's a possible possibility we could reduce the construction phase on this project. Um, we were looking at a three-year project. If, if things shake out the way they could, we could be down to two and a half years or maybe even two years and try to get it into alignment with the Newtown Middle School completion. Then we could move both at the same time. We could get Richburg offline a year earlier. So we're working to try to do that. We want to make sure that our uh, phases are realistic. So we have to, we're up here, we've got to get a little closer now and see uh, how all the activities work. Can we get foundations in? Can we get steel done? Can we get the building to close before the onset of winter? Um, all the things we have to study closely now. Uh, the value engineering was a draft summary that's been issued. <coughs> the base grant paperwork um, will continue after the bid phase. And the Act 34 preparation, um, Trader Group Architects, Breslin, Bob Reinhardt, PFM, East Burning Gray have all been instrumental in pulling information together for this uh, hearing that's coming up. Um, the purpose of the hearing is to establish, first of all, we, we need to do a handful of things. Um, we establish the needs of the project, and we talk about the events, the historic information that's been uh, collected leading to that hearing. We review the options that were considered by the board. We describe the construction and educational purposes of the building. Um, we review the estimated cost and tax implications of the project. And as I said, PFM will be there. They'll do their piece in presenting um, the, uh, the cost of financing. And it gives the citizens and residents a chance to comment uh, and ask questions. And again, the board will be at this hearing, but the board generally does not answer any questions. It's just an observation for the board. We'll take the questions and then we'll respond to those um, generally at a later date. Uh, the resolution of the board of school directors is basically uh, what I'll bring to you on October 1st. You approve that. It basically establishes the maximum construction and project costs. We always talk about those two costs. So the maximum construction cost and the maximum project cost. If we exceed the construction cost in bids, it triggers a referendum and it's a whole nother process that we want to stay away from. We can't afford to have uh, be over that, that number um, that we'll establish. And then the notice of the public hearing, we'll advertise that at the end of October. It'll appear until the hearing on the 19th of November. And then that 30-day written notice uh, period that ends the 7th of December. And then we can move forward with the next piece of the approvals, which were outlined on the schedule earlier. So that's what the Act 34 hearing is. It's very formal. Each person will have their part in the hearing as we go along. And generally, you would open it up and then turn it over. And then we'll do some of the, the, the work. I'll describe the needs. Bob Ryan Hart and his team will talk about the cost. And the architects will have a piece of it as well. Um, so there's a couple items I wanted to touch on that came up at facilities meetings in the past. One of the items Wendy was uh, I brought up, which was a concern for the basketball court orientation in the gym. She said, boy, I sure hope we can keep those two full courts. They're really beneficial to the community. And they are. Unfortunately, this doesn't show the main court. We're keeping two, bless you. We're keeping two full-size courts in the east-west direction. And the north-south is still where the competition court would be. So. You'll be able to open bleachers up to that competition court for an event. Um, otherwise, those bleachers close, and you have two nice uh, courts in the gym and a pull-down screen between those, so you can offer them to different groups. And that's the same layout that the new town middle school was. The town middle school is very similar. Yes. There was another uh, request and, and discussion, and Nancy actually had brought this up about um, considering 
breaking out some of the larger classrooms into small group construction rooms. And we were easy, able to easily accomplish that at uh, Newtown because it's new construction. So we asked Schrader to take a look at what that meant on the renovations project. Um, and they were able to find four rooms where we could do the same thing. So parity between the two schools, we'll have four full-size classrooms that we could also split and provide two small rooms in each one of those. So you go from basically 840 to two 420 rooms. They could be offered as full rooms all day. If you need to close them, we can. There'll be separate entrances to those spaces in the event that they are split in two. They'll be very functional room, very functional either way. So that's something we could accomplish. But 840 is the magic number for classrooms in middle school? Um, or are we gonna have size disparity in between the two schools? I would say that um, 840 is generally where we're at on both projects, but there are some rooms where we're not going to do because we're constrained by, by some things. But for the most part, yes, there's parity there. The courtyard at Newtown Middle School has gone through all sorts of looks. Um, initially, you saw something that was very, very expensive. There was a, a trellis structure, there were um, areas for teaching in the middle with uh, concrete steps, and it was mostly paved area. Uh, we found a way to reduce the amount of paved area, provide green, natural grass in the space, no turf. Um, two closets uh, on the east end of this that will allow us to put mowers and maintenance equipment in those closets from outside so we don't have to go through the building with any of those materials. And a, per a perimeter of paved area for circulation. So we minimize the amount of paved area. The other thing that we have here are a couple of tables for students. So we have tables here, tables here, a low wall here and here. This is all natural grass. We're looking at five birch trees or something similar that aren't big uh, canopies and a lot of leaves in the space. How does the students fit out? Oh, You're close to all this. The students get out. There's, there's a whole uh, set, series of doors. There's doors here and here, here and here. There's doors here, here, and again at the other end. So there's almost any wall in there you can um, get in or out of that space. So this meant to be tape, like white you know, tables there when the tables would be things. Um, this is a. Uh, th these are pavers or like concrete. That. The curvy thing is a low wall, and, and these are tables within the I'll show the rendering shows that a little better. And where's uh, the cafeteria from this stage? The cafeteria isn't adjacent to this, but we are, Nancy, looking at an outdoor space outside of this for uh, a couple of tables on both projects, actually. Thank you. Um, so the, the grouping of trees is up at the one end. The low walls are here. Here are the tables we talked about for students on either side. And then basically just a, a large grass area that's flexible space for whatever the principals may want to do in that area. But keeping it green, again, it is a lead gold project, so more green makes sense. Um, is that the scale? I mean, is it going to feel that big? Well, to the bottom end? Yeah. yeah, it's going to feel that big. It, it's two floors. It's, no, no, I mean the, the, the width or is that just the Yeah. Um, seems like a lot of space, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what <laughs> the width is. Yeah, camera, right? Andy, the width is about 85 feet. Yeah. So um, up top, 85 feet by 132 feet long. Um, the lawn area is about 70 feet by 85 feet. So yeah. pretty, pretty big. Yeah. 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 What's the purpose of the lots of small, small size soccer? The low wall is, um, yes, yeah, so some aesthetics. I mean, the architect put something in there. You get rid of a lot. Just trying to keep a little bit of something there. You could sit on it. And you, you could sit on it. It could be benches. Is that the entrance? What you're looking at one of them are the street. What you're looking at through the trees is uh, there's actually a set of stairs at that end of the building. At this end is the library. So there's similar elevations. Um, this is all glass and we'll into the library space. So. so that area is all enclosed? I'm sorry? That area is all enclosed? Yeah, it's a yes. no. It doesn't look that way. 
Yeah, you just have to make sure you can actually grow grass. That it gets enough sunlight to grow grass and that the grass is kept up. That's the trouble with the grass. I agree. And, and you know, we'll certainly have those bits here as well, so we have to maintain them all together. Yeah. <laughs> turf. Turf. Yeah. turf it. Why not? Why not? Play football in it. I do have pictures of courtyards with turf, but I stayed far away from it. Um, the Network Operations Center is moving along. The work started the week of the 17th of August. Um, the classroom reno is scheduled to be complete the 9th of October. We are on track uh, for that. The actual knock space is scheduled to be complete by December 1st, and we are doing very well in that area as well. We're vacating the dock from LSAC by no later than the 31st of December, and that's going to be very busy here over the holidays, um, moving things around. It will be seamless, he says. So some of the things, the progress update, the demolition is 99% complete. I can tell you now that it's about 100% complete since this was put together. Material delivery started. Metal stud construction is in progress. The utility works in progress. There's an underpinning design that has to be uh, performed on the outside of the building where the new doorways will go in. The perimeter of the building has a grade beam and caissons. That is basically a concrete beam that runs from column to column below the ground that provides the structure for all of the construction above. In order to cut the door openings in, there has to be some underpinning that goes in place to support that wall to keep, keep us structurally sound to work in basic terms. It's part of the project. They own underpinning at five locations to 20 feet deep. If we go deeper, there's a unit price per foot to extend it as far as we need to go to suitable bearings. I'll show you briefly uh, what that underpinning looks like. But to, to show you what that means, this is the outside wall. This is, the, uh, this is the new network operations room right here. There's an overhead door going in from the outside, from outside to in, so that we can get materials in and out of this space that Matt may have. There's also a man door for regular use here. So before we cut that opening, we're going to provide some extra support on the uh, foundation. These are just some pictures of what that looks like. It's not like you would imagine, there's actually, um, it's kind of cool, but there's actually um, helical pipe, uh, like a big drill bit, and basically they're screwed into the ground, and then ultimately they, they pick up the bottom of the foundation. So things have gotten very cost effective today in terms of structural reinforcing. It used to be, in the past, you'd have to dig a big hole and get concrete in there and support the building. So they'll go in um, along that elevation. That's in progress. And those, those things, you know, back in the day, everything rusted. Uh, but they're some kind of coated steel that's going to last for a while. Yeah, these, these things are. Yeah. Um, and this is kind of a, a distraction. But I, I still can't remember the, the water analogy you spoke to us before about the roof and the roof chains and things backed up. And then we had the the sewer adventure and I, I, is the is the, the drainage okay at the moment now? Yeah, we um, very rarely have any issues there. We used to have a lot of problems when water would go down the uh, ramp to the loading dock. It would go into the that drain that was in the building. There was a large sump pump. It would inundate that. Um, we we divert a lot of the water that used to run down that ramp by putting a trench drain above, by collecting water up top of the parking lot where we didn't collect it before, tied a lot of that into storm drains that went away from the building so that it doesn't go into that. And even if it were still happening, would this network operation center be safe from it? That was a different Oh yeah, world. yeah there's, this is not near any of the areas that experienced any of those problems in the past. But we have not had any major issues since we did that work, not one would. Um, we've been fortunate, so. They're, they're also not sitting there before. You're right. You're right. Yeah, the building, the building doesn't help itself the way it's located. Uh, but we can't do much about that. All we can do is try to fix what, what we were given. So. Uh, just a, a brief update on that. This was the uh, dark room. Uh, this was the exterior wall. This is actually one of the doorways gets cut into the wall. Uh, this is 
a lot of the demolition that's taken place walls have been removed. Um, you can see that we opened up in the adjacent classroom that we still live here. And we're starting with the stud installation. And this is actually the studs on the left side of that wall is the data room proper where all of the equipment will live. It's a large window opening that looks into the, the space next door. Um, coming along, um, in real good shape for the center. And the new, the, the, the old dark room that's going to be the new dark room or whatever. Right. right. Perfect. So, okay. so this is the new dark room um, in the industrial arts classroom right down the hall. It used to live exactly where that wall is. That corner used to be a dark room uh, before they renovated. So now we were able to, the reason that the cost came way down, we were able to do this very efficiently is because the ductwork that used to serve as exhaust and ventilation is still there. We're able to find it, tie back into it. The floor, the floor of the drains that we tie into are below the slab, right in that area that were capped. So we can open up the floor, find them, and tie back into them. And we're able to do this, you know, very, you know, very cost-effective way. So the the so we, did, we, we didn't need to have that long, painful discussion about the garden. Well, we did, but <laughs> we didn't. In the end, it was it was good we had. That's good, good work. Yeah. And that's the other part of the room that you're seeing. So on the on the left is the dark room proper, and to the right of it, there's still ample space in that room for desks and, and other programming. So we haven't taken a whole room away. It's still a very functional space. Um, capital projects. I'm not going to go into these in any great detail, other than we had a very successful summer. Very busy summer, very challenging summer. Uh, the majority of those projects are 100%. Um, the dishwasher's in, the concrete's finished. I'll come back to you and, and show you the final cost of all of these once I assemble all of the changes, material analysis, things that, that we have from them. Um, just some, some good shots. This was Richboro uh, Middle School. Willie didn't like to spend any more money there than we needed to, but. This curb was a big mess, it was deteriorated, it was a tripping hazard. Uh, we replaced the curb, a piece of the sidewalk, and then cut into the paving um, minimally to make it happen. But now it's a, a safer place for the kids when they get dropped off. This is just an example of sidewalk in South. We come out of the uh, locker area, out toward the parking lot and the fields. We're actually undermined on our paving there, and it's just an area that wasn't friendly. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's for you, but it, it, it's a silly question. But I noticed it at Richboro Elementary too. The whole front area of Richboro Elementary is that white concrete, and the rest is the other color. Why couldn't we get the same color? It will become that color. Will it? Yeah, in time? It, it, it goes in. It goes. It's like it looks so white now. You just have new and old. Look at the policy in the But it will change. For fifteen dollars a square foot, I could have given you all a nice. So, <laughs> okay, move forward. Just, it was just a question because it looks so. I agree, it, and, and whatever I can, I like to do a section, but you know, if it's not bad, it's, it's a, we got to keep it. Right, I'm not telling you. It, over it's over good, time, it will, it we'll, will, we'll play, it'll weather, it'll get dirty, it'll become a lot But it won't, it will never be that color then. The other side won't get whiter. No. This side will get dirty. This side will get dirty. Maybe after the, the, the uh, Holland Fair on Sunday, it'll be a little bit. Just screen your field whenever you go by. So this is the same area at South. We took that area that was grass. We, we made it all concrete, made it safer for the kids, um, far more functional than it was before. So there were areas where we did some things like that just to make things better for everyone. You can see there's kids actually standing there waiting for parents. It's a very functional space. Uh, modular removal, uh, all complete. The most dramatic project of all of them was definitely Hillcrest, where they went in and, and they crushed it with, with the backhoe, made a big mess, made my heart feel good to see them destroyed the way they did. Yeah, tremendous amount of and then, and then to see that when it was over, it's just really fantastic. I love to see the grass growing against the trees and reestablish some nice area back there. Uh, wireless infrastructure project is done. The um, Rolling Hills project is wrapped up. Again, uh, I know this isn't Patty's favorite, so I'm going to go quick. So I just want to see this school now. Both Bill and I said we'd like to go and visit now, and maybe then I'll feel less mad. 
Yeah. The spaces, I mean, that's, that's, that's how it fits out as a classroom. It feels very nice. Um, I've, I've heard good things. I've heard, you know, we did enjoy all those lockers. Um, I haven't been back there, honestly, to see what was finally done. But they, they were not moving them around a bit. They were going to put bases on them and make them uh, a bit more semi-permanent, if you will. I don't like the lockers there at all, personally. That, well, that, that's the result of adding a fifth grade session to, to the space that we didn't plan on. And when we did, we had to remove them from the back and find a new home for them. So it's a place where the kids can still have cubbies for their stuff. So they have an end caps, they have caps. And yeah, they were working on, on producing all, yes. Mm -hmm. we, we were making all that ourselves and putting that in. Do you mind just taking pictures? Yeah, I can do that. actively sitting there watching the cameras, it doesn't make sense to have the PTZs. Um, and we've, we've gone through a couple different analysis of that. It just doesn't make sense. I think it's probably right or wrong. Absolutely yeah. less expensive to put two, two cameras in to capture all of the animal than it is one camera that can move at this point. Yeah, this will include upgrading those and replacing those over time. So, quick, quick question. Did anybody see, I want to say it was today's show the other day, that the new school that they built in Indiana, to be high school, they got a grant plus a $400,000 donation to the Major League Security upgrades from trying to put them in smoke cannons. They locked every single room. Anybody see that? Didn't see that. It's, it's interesting. You might watch. Well, the thing I want to ask about, and we might already do this on a little bit anyway about our lockdown. One of the things that they add is when, when they, they go through their protocols, the building gets locked down, all the doors lock automatically. And then within the classrooms, they've got a procedure for the kids to actually get behind a particular red line that's in each classroom, so it's kind of no line of sight in. Uh, and then they kind of sit back there, they sit back there with the desk in front of the books, in front of their faces. But we, we actually, 
Should, have something like should I not sort of record this? Right. Yeah, not a good time. Okay, fair, fair enough. Um, routine maintenance, master planning update. So again, I'm going to carry this list each meeting. I know we're going to move into uh, master planning more heavily in October um, as we start the board meetings on that annually October, November piece. Um, just to go over the headings that we developed, the motions we developed in November 14, I'll keep them alive here. We can touch on them each month. Um, the capital improvement book plan for presentation um, on October 10th. I'm still on track to do so. I'm working away on the book. So I'll have those for distribution in October. Um, do you have, will you have those as PDFs or are they just really going to give us the book again? I will talk to them and see if they can get a PDF. I'll talk to them and see if they can get a PDF. They? I just, I appreciate the book, but in terms of being usable, being able to present, sitting at a meeting and holding up to look at it. We should do it. Uh, it's not working out as a PDF. It's one large PDF version that's placed on our website. That's how we. Right, I'll show you. Matt, you can show me more about what you want. And, and uh, even if it's one large, you can break it into smaller groups logically. Or I can break it into smaller groups. Yeah, just exactly. tell me what you're looking for. I'll help you out. I'll help you out. Exactly. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> and which you which staff on it? <laughs> yeah, all of them. Exactly. All, all of them. <laughs> I'm also then working on the list of capital projects for next year. I um, want to present it prior to December, hopefully November. I'm trying to get a lot together. Um, I would ideally love to present, give you the book, and talk about the projects in October if possible. Um, I just don't know if I can pull it all together. I will do my best. Uh, removal of the remaining modules in the classroom is used for stories. I think that um, we know that they'll be part of the summer projects for next year. Um, the one building we have to figure out how we're going to address was uh, Hillcrest Elementary School, that's the one school that still has two modules that aren't used for teaching, but they do have storage in there that's part of the, the programming for the building. It was uh, and they're using a level library and, and science storage kids. for science kids. So we're working on, on the plan for that, but that's the one of the four buildings that challenges us the most right now. Develop an action plan for district storage. I think that we have a plan pending the KDK agreement does happen. I haven't seen the space, I don't know what it looks like at all, but it sounds like the square footage that we need, and uh, approximately, it's certainly not spelled right, but <laughs> five to 6,000 uh, square feet is what we're looking for. Develop options for redistricting um, and or school consolidation, um, include building efficiencies, including capacities and educational programming, that's an October board agenda item, and we'll have further discussion on that, what it looks like and what, what it means. Reduce the LSAC lease starting August 31st. We have removed central warehousing and administrative space from that building. I think we've gone from roughly 29,000 square feet to 14,000 or so. So we've almost cut it in half uh, or half. Additional reduction will happen in January when the mount is removed from the space as well. Repurposing Twining Ford facility, um, that was something that was discussed, but I don't know that it was ultimately approved as a board motion item, so I have to revisit that. Right now, um, it's certainly something that should be considered as part of our big master planning, but I don't know that it was um, something that was an I think, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, gang. I think we were looking for options to try and get out of that space. I think we were, but when I looked at the motions, I felt that this is one that didn't necessarily. Maybe 24 did, but the other. I think, other, I think it's facilities in general, we're looking for ways to get out of those. So if you guys aren't actively considering options, I, I, I would suggest we probably should be. I think, I think it ties into some of the other components. You know, again, if you, if you were to consider closing schools, then there might be this space to go else. So it's part of a bigger. Um, discussion. Yeah, it's as long as we kind of get hey, here's your options as we know them. Absolutely. When we, do, when we get to our annual review and yeah. we decide to move forward. Then. Okay. Um, this one is obviously happening. Develop a long term middle school plan that includes reservations to the Holland Middle School. The design team is in progress. And the Act 34 hearing is 
forthcoming, save for the Newtown Middle School project. That is uh, in progress. One year prior to the completion of the Holland Middle School, uh, take a look at um, proposed redistricting, evaluate the repurposing of sale of the Richborough Middle School property. So when this happens, it's still to be determined. We were able to successfully uh, renovate that school in two years, and this conversation is going to happen a year sooner than we anticipated. Uh, stay tuned, and I'll let you know when that's going to happen. But we're working hard to cut a year off of that project if we can. And that, and that would include the full process that we would need to follow that year when we close the school the right way. Absolutely. That is it. It looks like it's 7 30. So, um, I got a minute. I don't know. Uh, how much did um, the state like get a bit more full time paramounts there? I'm sorry? How much did we save by getting rid of a full time paramount stand that went around for one of the other? Their contract is based upon not the number of staff members, but square footage, cost per square footage. You said we used to have a person who went around the middle of the Oh, um, energy. I'm know. sorry, I'm confusing custodial with that. Okay. And I, I thought you were talking about reduction. Do you know how much we saved? Yeah, we used. Um, I don't know what we saved from what the original agreement was with our market in terms of when they came to you before there was uh, a plan, developed a plan, and how they were compensated uh, based on the savings that the district realized. So I don't know what that original contract was. I only know that when I came here, that that process was wrapping up. We were paying $100,000 a year to Aramar for uh, energy um, for their representative, uh, who wasn't really stationed here anymore regularly, and we weren't seeing the same kind of service. I changed that to not to exceed $80,000 per year based on hourly rates and our request for them to perform services for the district. So right now, if they do nothing, we pay nothing. Before I came, we were paying them a yearly fee regardless. So we, we switched that up so we only pay for services that they perform. Okay. So the other thing is I find the PowerPoints much more interesting than the stuff on here. Will the PowerPoints be online? Yes, the, the last two are. Okay. And, and they're, they're included with the minutes and just turned into a PDF and we plug them in with the minutes. So the minutes and the PowerPoints are all. Uh, I want to get feedback. I'm happy to be working for tables outside here, uh, both cafeterias, and um, I find the CI people very easy to use. It's done by school, it's done by project, it's done by overall, you know, total things. So there's many different ways you can look at it and get synopsis. Um, and uh, last, uh, I am for getting out of LSAT, I am 24, but I am against using a huge space like Richborough Middle to put those smaller functions in a big, large school. So I, I want our spaces to be used in the right size that we're going to change. So for you, that would propose, Nancy, it would be a multiple use kind of proposal where it wouldn't just be a couple small things in a large building. We would find a way to demonstrate how you could carve that building out for multiple uses and make it a fully functioning Facility. So I agree with you. I don't want to do it that way. Thank you. 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 Thank